Let's talk to Dr. Brightson uh, about maternal mortality. Doc, good morning. Thank you very morning. much for your time. So how are you doing? Fine. Great. Very well. Maternal mortality is, is being a big issue for most women in this country and the world over. First of all, what is it? I think that um, in the scheme of trying to define maternal mortality, right. we'll end up using certain terminologies that right. um, a lot of people may not understand. Mm. That as much as possible, I try to simplify mm. it. That uh, no woman should necessarily die okay. as a result of becoming pregnant right. or dying mm. in childbirth or any death that has got to do with the process of the pregnancy. Mm. But not necessarily anything. A pregnant woman may die from, uh, let's say, a road traffic accident. Right. That is not maternal death. Okay. A pregnant woman may suffer uh, abuses mm. at home mm. or even outside. That is not maternal mortality. Okay. You understand? So whatever death that surrounds the processes of the pregnancy, okay. either through delivery mm. or through any other means, okay. relates to maternal death. Mm. I see. What, what are some of the conditions that will prevail to uh, qualify to say this is maternal mortality? Maternal mortality comes as a result of uh, quite a number of things. For example? It could be... As a result of systemic, okay. systemic challenges, or as a result of the woman's own health challenges, okay. you understand. So when you talk of systemic challenges, we are referring to things that we could put in place, mm -hmm. things that we have the power as people to do, mm -hmm. like making sure that there is blood available okay. all the time. Right. Not sometimes, mm. but all the time. Mm. These are systemic challenges. Right. Okay. So it means that we can do it. Mm. Then making sure that there are medications available, mm. the medicines that pregnant women would need, even in the course of the pregnancy, okay. and then during the time of delivery, mm. that everything is available. Making sure that every facility mm -hmm. that takes care of pregnant women, mm. has a devoted theater right. readily available that the woman can be rushed in mm. and be saved. These are systemic challenges. Right. Making sure that the doctors there or the human resource have the requisite know-how mm. to, to bring it to bear. Okay on saving the woman mm. is a systemic okay. challenge. Okay. The, you know, these are the systemic challenges. And then we have the woman's own health challenges. You understand that the woman herself may have problems that tend to jeopardize the completeness of her health mm -hmm. in the course of carrying the pregnancy. Right. And if she doesn't, if she doesn't get the requisite attention, mm. so we are marrying the systemic okay. with her own. I see. Yeah. So could there be some uh, health conditions of the woman? For example, she has fibroid, uh, she has a lower cervix. Explain to us that could, this that could necessitate... Yeah, that this things, these things are there and they are with quite a number of women. Okay. They do not necessarily condemn the woman to death. Okay. I mean, having fibroids mm -hmm. and... Ha uh, uh, with pregnancy mm. does not necessarily, I use the word necessarily, okay. does not necessarily mean that you are condemned to death. Okay. There are hundreds and thousands of women we have saved um, carrying. The, the challenge is mm. the complications that would arise. What, what are the there's complications? Bleeding, possible complications? Bleeding. bleeding could one, arise. one is bleeding. So there's loss of blood? There's, yes, loss of blood. Mm. And the uh, in, in, and within the loss of blood, a lot of things happen. When the complications are, are unfolding, okay. it becomes a cascade of events. Mm. So she begins to bleed. The, the womb, mm. let me say the womb, mm. for the purposes of everybody's right. understanding. Right. The womb where the baby is lying itself, mm. as a result of the fibroids inside, may not contract. Mm. For every womb, 
after the baby had come out, okay. there is a natural tendency mm -hmm. that it needs to contract. You see, I can see your face through my fingers opened right, right. this way. But so these are where the blood, where this is where the blood passes, mm. and she begins to bleed. Right. So after the baby had come out, these holes must it's do what? It's supposed to close. It's supposed to close. Okay. So it needs to contract. Mm. In the presence of fibroids, this mechanism becomes a little problematic. Okay. And then we have to intervene. Mm. So it's one of the I of see. the challenges. There are other challenges. Nutrition, for example. Well, nutrition is a is a cumulative effect. Mm. I mean, if you are not feeding well, and um, because you are not feeding well, you are not able to manufacture blood mm. within you, mm. and then your blood level drops. Mm. So if you go to the labor ward to deliver, and let's say your HB, hemoglobin, mm. let me use say blood level, right. so that everybody will understand. Your blood level is 10, mm. let's assume. Okay. And another person comes, and her blood level is five, mm. and you all bleed the same quantity, quantity of blood. Okay. The one with blood level of five mm. is more likely to to die right. within a very short period of time mm. than the one with a blood level of ten, mm. because the one with ten they drop to let's say six, okay. and within that six we are struggling and trying to save her, mm. organizing blood here and there. Okay. But the one with blood level of five mm. will drop to one. That is a lifeless, practically a lifeless body. When we come back, we'd like to find out from you, after we've seen the story, uh, the regularity with which women experience maternal mortality. But where we have information that the Shire Sudoku District Hospital in the Greater Accra region has recorded zero maternal mortality for the past five years. Hospital authorities have attributed the feat to good infrastructure, commitment of staff, and the quality of the health delivery. Take a look at the story. Authorities at the Shai Osudoku District Hospital declared no baby must die at the facility in 2010. With this, the staff worked assiduously to ensure the goal is met. The zero tolerance for maternal mortality policy began where the facility was recording over 2,000 cases yearly. In 2015, the hospital registered 2,146 pregnant women attending antenatal clinic with 1,518 deliveries and 100 CS cases. 2,000 150 pregnant women attended antenatal clinic with 1,480 deliveries in 2016. In 2017, the hospital recorded 2,115 antenatal cases and 1,708 deliveries. In 2018, saw 1,023 attendants with 1,058 deliveries. Prior to 2010, the facility used to record some deaths. I look at the terrain and I look at what was going on. And then I said, no, we have to declare a policy of zero tolerance for maternal mortality. So quickly, I had to form a team. And I looked at where the cases were coming from. Then I decided that Every Friday of my stay, I would run one clinic in Dr. Kennedy Bryson added that a pregnancy school for pregnant women and their husbands and potential mothers, where tutorials are given to them on pregnancy, also helped. Currently, the antenatal clinic books 100 pregnant women daily. Most of the women come from far and near, especially from outside the district. Putting up this facility help us in a way. We got people from other places if they wanted to come here. Formerly, we were referring clients to Kolebu, Tema, Ridge, and the rest. But now, hardly before, unless we don't have the, the machines that we use or beyond us. Mothers who had received care at the facility express satisfaction with the quality of service and work attitude of staff. 
Well, so that's some good news there. Dr. Bryson, congratulations. Thank you. Your hospital has been able to Thank achieve you. this. You declared a policy yes. and you got it sorted out. Yes. But I want to find out on a regular basis, mm -hmm. uh, we'll come to your success story, but on a regular <laughs> basis, uh, how, how many women would, would ordinarily go into a labor ward and not come with their baby or themselves? How frequent is that? With respect to our hospital, mm. Um, not not your hospital because your hospital general, says you have uh, recorded zero. Yeah, but I do not have the data right. or the national level mm. on the the number well, of well, women. I'm, I'm that asking this through. because a lot of women have years once they take seed and they are. Into of experience. I think the first thing that. Um, we must try to move away from is over my uh, friend will say trying to put a religious tone mm. on everything okay. that um, once you become a pregnant then there is some satan somewhere mm. that is trailing you and for that matter you begin to listen to people who deal with religious issues Medical issues. Yes, I see. yes. Okay. I don't. I don't want to say pastors. Right. I don't. Right. I don't. I don't. I'm not going to say pastors. Okay. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> don't say it then. You understand. So we must so, focus more on the medical yes. than the spiritual. Yes. So and you know the human mind is such that um, because people have ube wafa wafa uba you know a whole lot of this okay. and you have to go for prayers in the morning prayers mm. and after prayers mm. then people begin to think that. The childbirth is not scientific. Okay. It has become spiritual. Mm. So once you think that childbirth is no longer scientific, mm. then you would begin to hesitate to look for scientific help. Ah, you see. begin to look for spiritual help. Mm. Let me tell you one thing. There have been serious occasions where pastors have come to the hospital okay. and they have refused to let their, 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 their wives okay. go through what is required for them to have their babies and themselves. Like what? Like the, the, there was the, 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 a couple of examples, mm. for instance. Uh, there's a, there was a woman standing in front of me bleeding. She was bleeding. Okay. And um, I had explained to her that we needed to have surgery okay. quickly. Mm. And she said, no, unless I call my husband mm. first. Okay. If my husband agrees, then I'll go. Then okay. I went, and this is something we see often. Wow. Then I tell her that at this material moment, your life is not in your husband's hand. Okay. Your life, you are solely responsible for your mm -hmm. own life. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you die right now, in the, the longest time your husband can wait is probably uh, one month, three months, mm -hmm. four months, and somebody else will be There's lying on the bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why don't you think of yourself? The woman still refused. So I moved to the magistrate court. Okay. I went to the magistrate court to talk to the judge. Okay. If he could give me some, some power exactly. to go against the woman's wish mm. and then operate her and save her life. Okay. Then they had closed. I didn't know what to do. I rushed to um, Dofsu. Okay. And then I spoke to the commander. Okay. The commander brought some macho policemen, right. you know, powerful policemen. Mm. They came to the hospital. And they picked... The woman had the audacity to write in her book mm -hmm. that as far as my husband is concerned, right. I'm not going to have the cesarean section. I'm going to deliver and I'll be fine and I'll be alive. This woman was bleeding. This and, one, and, and that is what they call some... anti, antipartum hemorrhage. Okay. The placenta, mm -hmm. the placenta that feeds the baby right. was lying low. low. So it means that the placenta wants to come out first ah. before the baby. In the normal thing, first. That's dangerous. It's very dangerous. Very dangerous for both mother mm. and baby. There was nothing I could do. And I could not imagine watching the woman bleed to death. So I asked the policeman to carry him away. Okay. And they carried him. The commander said, I give you protection. Go ahead and save the woman. So we took the woman to theater. We saved her. 
Four years later, I went to Makola to buy something. Mm. We entered a shop with my, my, my best friend. Right. You know my best friend, mm. my wife. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> my best friend. Mm. And then somebody comes to me, Dr. Bryson, Dr. Bryson, won't call me. And I said, no. He said, I'm Jim in Kwan. Oh, doctor, why are you? Papa, I'm going to call you. You understand? Take a look at this. Doc. We had another one, a mm. Pentecost elder. Right. Sorry I mentioned the name right. of the church, but um, an elder also stood there and refused. You had huge fibroids okay. standing in the way of the baby. Mm. The baby could not come out. The woman needed cesarean section. Right. The woman was contracting and needed cesarean section. And the husband stood there and said, no, in the name of Jesus Christ, mm. this baby is going to come out. And I said, the baby will come out. We are not saying the baby won't come out. The baby will come out. We have to do right. surgery. Right. He said, and I said, no, Jesus never told you what you're saying. Then I called the police again. This time I had a clue, so I called the police. Uh, and they sought him. And they out. came and they took him away. And then I went ahead and I saved the woman. Okay. We went into dangerous complications, but we pulled through and we saved the woman. I see. So you see, the, the religion mm. is actually disturbing. Right. It's disturbing a lot of women, mm. you know. Mm. But Doc, I thank you very much for your time. And <laughs> congratulations you. for you. deciding to save women <laughs> uh, in spite of the religiosity that yeah. people are expressing. Yeah. Most grateful. I'm proud of you. Thank and you. that's Dr. Bryce from the Shire Sudoku Hospital. And over the last five years, they have not recorded a single case of maternal mortality. I'm sure you can make a difference as well. We all believe in God, but when you have to apply science, please do and save a life. Yes. Right. 30 seconds. Yeah, 30 seconds. That's for the cases that we see. Right. The over thousands you have seen on the TV that we we see them, mm. they don't die. They don't die. They don't die. Right. I need to emphasize on right. this. They're they don't not die. like referrals that are brought in almost dead. Okay. No, that's not what we are saying. I see. We'll take a break.